Outdoors Del Marva covers everything outdoors. Including real hunting and fishing situations involving wildlife. We do our best each and every week to keep it tasteful, but discretion is advised. Now, enjoy the show. This week on Outdoors Del Marva. Well, most people think of deer season as happening in the fall and winter months, but for researchers, it's a year-round season. We'll show you how they're tagging and tracking whitetails from afar. Then, nice fish. reports say that tuna meat. have been thick these days, and that's perfect timing for one of the area's most well-known tournaments. We're headed to the scales. And big or small, take a kid fishing and they'll be hooked. Summer is here and we'll catch up with some youngsters enjoying some time on the water. Right now on Outdoors Del Marva. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker and I'm here at the headquarters of the Redden State Forest in Sussex County, Delaware in between Milton and Georgetown, if you will, and geographically, just a perfect location to be conducting a few pretty important wildlife studies, both of them in cooperation between DENREC and the University of Delaware. Well, we'll be showing you a little bit of both over the next few weeks, but to start things off right now, we're gonna talk about a species that I would say is simply vital to the Delmarva outdoor lifestyle, white-tailed deer. And as I found out, well, they're not just interested in these animals when it's hunting season. Take a look. Eric, we're going to Wilson. Sawmill and station 70, 71, 73 area. We have established roadside telemetry stations uh, all throughout the county. They're at different um, intersections or just road signs where we know we can find them again. Some of them are marked and some of them are just written down uh, in, on data sheets. If you were just driving by, the sight of someone standing on a rural roadside holding a large metal antenna into the air might look a little strange. And then once I, I pick a beep, I keep that and I'm going to take a, a, just a regular compass. If you're a regular visitor to Redden State Forest in Sussex County, then you've probably already heard about the white-tailed deer study and know that researchers aren't just trying to tune in the local top 40 station. Holly, she's at 122, deer 21. And then I would just do the same thing depending on how many deer are in the area. Uh, now I could switch to a different deer. This beeps a little louder, she's a little closer to the road. When Outdoors Del Marva spent the afternoon with biologists and researchers from both DENREC and the University of Delaware, we were really only seeing part of the process. Graduate student Missy Miller will spend months tuning in her scanner and listening for the sequence of beeps that tell her that one of several special deer is close by. We're just focusing on Sussex County right now, predominantly in and around Redden State Forest. We, uh, we capture the animals in late fall, but mostly in the winter. But then we follow their movements, you know, almost daily uh, throughout the whole year as shown in these pictures. Deer that earlier this year were trapped in nets and fitted with ear tags, but most importantly, fitted with radio collars that allow researchers to track their movements. So we have a white tail deer collar, wraps around, bolts on, got the antenna here that runs inside, and this is the main part of the transmitter. I've gotten to know them pretty well. Um, I usually can know before I check uh, where a deer will be. Uh, they do surprise me once in a while where they'll take off for a day or two or move greater distances than I expected. And I think the general results could be surprising uh, based on what I thought when I first started the project to what I've been learning. Now the deer aren't harmed by their newfound bling in the name of science. And in the end, researchers hope it will help the local whitetail herd, providing insight into natural home ranges and learning which deer may be more affected by hunting pressures or more likely to be killed by a vehicle. Deer movement rates, you know, how much are these deer moving from a day-to-day -day basis, from month to month, you know, and season to season. One of the complaints that I receive every year from farmers are that they see deer in their fields during the summer months eating their corn, their soybeans, their wheat, all that stuff. And one of the things they say is by the time hunting season comes around, the deer are gone. 
And if they are still there, then we need to educate our hunters on trying to be more efficient at harvesting those animals and reducing some of those crop damage impacts. Wildlife management information that could help determine things like hunting seasons and bag limits in the future. This research is their dollars at work. We're trying to learn information to, to provide a better resource for them. The ultimate goal is to better manage the resource. Now obviously these field researchers can draw their own conclusions about what these deer are doing just from their own experiences in the field over the last few months. But the actual results won't be available until all of the research is compiled over the next few years. Now remember, coming up next week, we're going to show you another project happening in cooperation between DENREC and University of Delaware, this time focusing on a bird that we seem to pay a lot of attention to during the spring, the wild turkey. We're going to take you right up to a freshly hatched nest. And we'll be right back. Coming up next on Outdoors Delmarva, summer is here and so are plenty of local fishing derbies. We'll head out on the water and catch up with some local youngsters. But first... Did you know? White-tailed deer are known to be fast runners and use their speed to evade potential predators. But on average, what is a deer's top speed? The answer, when we come back. Outdoors Delmarva is sponsored by Shorts Marine, Shooter's Choice, you want to see the collar? and Goody's Marine. Outdoors Zone Marble will be right back. So it goes around and hooks. This part sits at the bottom. Did you know? White-tailed deer are known as fast runners. On average, researchers consider their top speed to be about 30 miles per hour. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Captain Willie Dykes. Some local boys and girls were treated to a free day of fishing recently, and while they were busy catching the fish, our cameras were busy catching the action. Let's take a look. The banks of this tributary of the Wicomico River were lined with anglers for the annual Salisbury Youth Fishing Derby, held on this beautiful first Saturday in June. The event began promptly at 9 a.m. and it wasn't long before the youthful anglers were hauling fish ashore. Boy 100, boy 100, we got six, six for boy 100. Go back and get some more, man. We have uh, bluegills, we have catfish, we have bass, uh, largemouth and smallmouth bass. Here's a smallmouth bass right here. Ooh, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Here we go. Let me do this. Uh -huh. He's trying to eat my worm. He's trying to eat your worm. He sure did. Look at that worm. He got that worm. The youngsters will also be fishing for these trophies to be handed out for a number of different categories. We are giving out trophies for uh, most fish caught, uh, most unusual catch, uh, youngest fishermen, most enthusiastic fishermen. And then the largest fish. And my favorite part is watching the, the people who aren't really good at fishing catch their first fish possibly, or their first couple, and running up here so excited. Here we go, man. We're going to measure it. Boy, 97. Six. <gasps> you. Go get some more. Yeah, all right. Boy 121 hauls in this monster of a bass. 15. 15. Woo! Yep, 15 inches. Good job, nice bass. Awesome. One more, look up at me. And the catch is well documented before he gets the chance to see him released back into the water to spawn more of his kind. There he goes. Oh. <laughs> Summer's got number 13, Summer. A six and a half inch fish. You can find a few pint-sized veterans by the water's edge, hooked at an early age. You have the page open right to you. I've been fishing with my granddad for like 10 years. I thought it was really fun being out on the boat, just fishing, having fun with the family. And my grandma would fish too with us when we'd just go fishing. And when we get home, we clean the meat. And some of the anglers prove a bit savvy with their technique. If it doesn't come in within two minutes, I'll try a different place. While others just seem to be naturals. Oh, you do have one. There you go, buddy. Because boy 100 is, you're catching these things. 
On the other hand, some just can't seem to get in the swing of things. Either way, the action continues and the number of fish caught keeps growing. Five minutes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, fishing, five more minutes. Get your last catches out. Who has the largest fish, the biggest fish? Who has the ugliest fish? Five more minutes. Yeah, we need to take them off. Let's see if I can do it. I'm bad at this. Woo! No, no. Aha! Yay! All right. In the bucket. Yeah, let's, well, we gotta measure them first. Here. Woo! <laughs> Hello. Hello. Don't try to get rid of yourself up. I feel like I missed one in between the total. Oh, you son of a gun. Okay, I'm Yeah, because <laughs> he's feisty. There. Thank you, thank you for fishing. Please bring up whatever's on your line. Bring them in. All of the people who have our stations, please bring over your list to me so we can tally up the fish and the results for the trophy presentation. The participants also reel in a free lunch while the results are tallied. Young lady with the most fish, 20 of them, is Miss Summer Martin. Where's she? Give her a round of applause. Summer? Number 50, the prize for the youngest fisher person today is Logan Jarrett. Number 50, where's Logan? He's coming, check it out, stroller. <laughs> Look, you get a trophy. Now, there may have been a limited number of trophies, but you can bet the memories reeled in today are countless. Get outdoors, Don Marma. Now, if you miss this popular event, keep in mind it's always held on the first Saturday in June. You never know, you might get a young angler hooked yourself. Coming up next on Outdoors Del Mar, we're talking tuna as we preview a popular tournament happening this weekend and tell you where you can still catch some of the action. Stay with us. Mike and Captain Willie have more adventures to come. Well, it's that time of year again when we start to talk some tuna, and why not? There is another big fishing tournament happening in the area this weekend, the 22nd annual MSSA Tournament. Yeah, it's happening up and down our Atlantic coast from Ocean City down to places like Chincoteague and Wachapreague, Virginia. And the thing we like about this one is the weigh-ins happen all weekend long, so it doesn't matter when you're watching the show here on Saturday night or Sunday morning, you still have time to get out and catch some of the action. A few minutes ago, I spoke to one of the organizers, and asked what to expect. It, it, it's 22 years now we've been into it, and uh, we've had uh, a lot of anglers from all over the country, but mostly here in Maryland, Delaware, and Virginia. It's big game fishing, so it's, it's, it's the excitement of getting out there on the big water ocean uh, and, and hooking up into one of those 100, 200, 300 pound big tuna and uh, bringing it back to the scales and watching everybody's faces uh, drop, so that, that's fun. So we want to say good luck to everybody involved in this weekend's tournament. Again, there are weigh-ins left here on Sunday night from 4.30 to 7, right here at Sunset Marina in West Ocean City. Another good spot would be the Curtis Merritt's Marina down in Chincoteague, so get on out there. We've had some great reports for the recreational fishermen of tuna being caught way out of the canyons, plenty of yellowfin being brought in. Also, some new reports of the bluefin tuna being pretty thick, a little bit closer to shore in spots like Jack Spot and also at the Twin Wrecks. Whatever you're after, I can guarantee you a lot of those fish are going to end up on boats between now and the 4th of July. And now, it's time to visit with an old friend. Here's this week's Scorchy's Corner Classic. Jake Wicks led the charge, and the good old boys of the Eastern Shore Fox Hunters Club came up busting out of their Vernon, Delaware clubhouse to do what they love best. <coughs> It's something right. that you have to be brought right. up with. You know, uh, my dad fox hunted all of his life, and my brothers and I growed up with it, you might say. Every living thing involved loves a fox hunt. The participants, the dogs. Come on now. Yes, even the fox, and especially Jake Wicks. This sport, why, well, it's just something that it's a good, clean sport, and we don't tie up anything or we don't shoot nothing. The 
fox is sitting down in the woods and laughing at them dogs. His papa said, if you can enjoy the music, why well, you enjoy fox hunting. Did you say that you saw the fox, or was it Leon saw the fox? Yeah, I'll see him. Hello. But the sly old fox had seen them a long time ago. Fox loves to be run. They, they just play around and wait for the dogs to get up on them. Any time I can hear a foxhound run, why, I'm in my glory. And uh, I suppose I'll do it all my life, the rest of my life. <laughs> Or Chitos wandering our Del Marvelous Land for WBOC News. Coming up next on Outdoors Del Marva, we're headed to Dover for some more time on the shooting range. And listen up, ladies, we'll check out the latest gear just for you. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. Faster than you can reload your 12 gauge. Coming up on the next episode of Outdoors Del Marva. Just being able to share the time with the children, being able to allow them to know what my father's forefathers actually did over here on Aztec Island many, many years and hope to see it continue on in the years to come with, with the new generation. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker, back here again with one of the fine sponsors of our program talking about Shooter's Choice, located right here in Dover, Delaware. Joining me right now, the guy who makes it all happen around here, Dave Lawson. Hey, Mike. Good to see you again. Good to see you too, Dave. And you know what else is good to see? I mean, I always have a great time looking around your shop. You guys have a little bit of everything. But right over here, boy, Dave, I'm seeing a lot of pink. Stuff tailored for the ladies. Absolutely. The ladies like to shoot. We have a lot of female clientele. They love to come in and shoot. They love to learn to target. They love to learn to shoot for self-defense as well. And it covers pretty much everything. There's pink shotgun shells. There's pink bags. There's the pepper spray in pink. There's, uh, there's quite a bit. We even have some pink, pink handled firearms over there. Aha, check this out. The Walther PK380. Dave, I'd say a nice new twist for that modern day Bond girl. <laughs> Yeah, and here we have the revolver and also a rifle. Almost all the manufacturers are coming up with the pink and catering more toward the female shooter. Nice look and nice guns. When it comes to the range, you guys actually have a ladies' night. Tell me about it. Well, ladies' night, we run quarterly, and we cater to the women. We bring them in, we take them through, through training. They get to shoot, they get targets, they get some food even. And they have a great time. They get anywhere from 30 to 50 women every time they have this, and usually new customers each time. All right, Dave, well, a new gun and maybe my first time on the range can be a little intimidating, but you guys can put me at ease. Absolutely. We'll have you squared away with a gun. You'll be very much at ease with it. You'll be comfortable with it. You'll be able to leave with it and feel that you have what you need at that point. Nice shot. You know, every gun has a different feel, so having this opportunity to really give this one a test drive is great. Dave Lawson, thanks again. It's been great. I am really impressed with this whole process. Well, thank you. Don't forget, you still have two hours of range time coming. Well, I guess I'll be back soon. <laughs> From safety, customer service, maintenance, and training, Shooter's Choice, always on target. We'll be right back. Still to come on Outdoors Del Marva, the viewer Venture Cam is back with our latest Shark Tale. And don't miss your newest viewer pictures. Outdoors Del Marva viewer pictures are sponsored by North Bay Marina. Outdoors Del Marva is sponsored by Shorts Marine. Shooter's Choice. And Goody's Marine. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker, and I'm here at the Fisherman's Marina in West Ocean City, where I just got back from a trip with Captain J.W. Hawker and the crew aboard the Miss Caroline, headed offshore for a bluefin tuna trip. And we'll be showing you more of that action coming up next week. But before we go any further this week, we wanted to give you a recap of the recent Ocean City Shark Tournament. 
Despite a weekend of less than favorable fishing weather, the 31st annual Ocean City Shark Tournament still provided some thrills. Outdoors Del Marva was there when both of the weekend's top two sharks arrived at the scales. The 174 pound Mako caught by the guys on the triple threat was a beauty, but was quickly unseated when the crew of the non typical weighed in a 224 pound Mako less than an hour later. The non typical also took first place in the dolphin category, weighing in this 32 pounder on Saturday evening. Now, the same team of anglers also took top prize in the release division, but just nudging out the crew of the Cool Hand Luke, who came through for us with some viewer venture cam video. Take a look. Hi, Mike and Captain Way. We're aboard the Cool Hand Luke in the Ocean City Shark Tournament. The crew caught and safely released a number of sharks, compiling 36 total points and securing second place in the tournament. Thanks again for taking the viewer venture cam along for the ride. And congratulations to the winner and all the participants of the Ocean City Shark Tournament. It's time now to take a look at the pictures sent in by our own Outdoors Del Marva viewers. Alan Sklar from Ocean City posted this picture to the Outdoors Del Marva Facebook page. He's an avid surf fisherman and recently caught and released this nice red drum off Assateague Island. Those drum put up a great fight. Thanks again for sharing, Alan. Wendy Moores from Mardella Springs has been witnessing some spring arrivals in the backyard. She used her camera to capture this moment with an adult woodpecker feeding her young. Looks like this little guy was well hidden in that hole until the food arrived. Hundreds of people tested their endurance a few weeks ago at the 70.3 Eagle Man Triathlon in Easton. Thanks to ASI Sports Photography for passing along these photos of the event and the men's winner, T.J. Tollickson. Those guys and gals are some of the toughest around. And here's a short video sent in by viewers Leela and Sonny Crist from Ocean City. It seems the annual horseshoe crab spawn has come right to their back doors. This video shows the crabs piling on top of each other as the females lay thousands of little green eggs and the males rush in to fertilize them. We love sharing your outdoor videos and photos here on the show, so please keep them coming. Just email Mike Parker at mparker at wboc.com or post your pictures to the Outdoors Del Marva Facebook page. We've had a lot of fun this week and we hope you'll join us for another round of adventures really soon. For Mike Parker, I'm Captain Willie Dykes reminding you to get outdoors, Del Marva.